Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I want to specifically talk about Aspire and how telemetry can work with it. I did do a video recently, and I'll leave a link in the show notes, that covered what telemetry is and how it works with .NET 8, but this is going to be expanding on that to talk about how we're going to be using it in Aspire. Before we get started, I just wanted to plug my workshop, A Day of Aspire. In this day-long effort, I'm going to be talking about how to include Aspire, how to add things like telemetry and different kinds of objects, and we'll go all the way down to distribution, both with Azure as well as with Kubernetes. You'll see a code at the bottom of the screen that will get you $200 off, even if you are getting it with the early bird pricing. This is your chance to get it pretty cheap. And you'll see a link at the bottom of the screen that you can take to go ahead and get your tickets. On with the story. So I'm back here in Visual Studio, like I always am, and we have a couple of things in here that I want to talk about. We still have that API project, and we still have this host project, but I want to create something that we can use in multiple places. Now, right now, I only have one .NET assembly, so this may not seem as useful, but we're going to quickly ramp this up, probably in the next session where I add a bunch of different other services, like RabbitMQ and probably a SQL Server and some other pieces, so we can see how they're all going to work together. So what I'm going to start with is actually just to create a new file here in the common project, and I'm going to call it service defaults. So you can call it anything you want. And all I'm really going to do here is I'm going to make this a public static class, mostly because I'm just going to create extension methods in here. I could have called it service default extensions or whatever you want. I'm not too concerned with that. And we're going to create a static object that returns a host application builder. This is a class that the builder is when you create a new web project. And all I'm going to say is configure this iHost application builder, builder. And then for the body, I'm just going to return the builder, right? Because I'm trying to return the same object. Now, this builder doesn't exist in my common project because my common project isn't a web project. So we're going to go over and manage our NuGet packages. And what I'm looking for here is Microsoft Extensions Hosting. And what we're really looking for is the abstractions. The abstractions are going to allow us to have the underlying interfaces, which is all we really need in our common project. So let's bring that down. And with that, we should be able to just go ahead and add our namespace for Microsoft Extensions Hosting. And we get our application builder here. Since I want to use OpenTelemetry, we're also going to need the open telemetry hosting. Bring that in as well, nice and quick. What we're going to do here is just say builder, because remember, we're going to use this configure in any .NET applications we're working with. And I want to actually add in logging, add open telemetry. This will take a configuration. You may have seen this in my last video where we can go ahead and tell it, you know what, include formatted message equals true. So we're just configuring it to say, go ahead and use any open telemetry log messages and go ahead and spit that out into the logs that are wired up. And by default, that's going to be console where we can see some of those. Next thing we're going to want to do is look at our services and add open telemetry. And we're going to specifically add with metrics and with tracing. Now, what does this really mean? This means support open telemetry, and I am going to have some metrics so to see how an application is performing, as well as being able to see tracing across an application. We also want to include some ASP.NET metrics in our project. And so we're going to need yet another NuGet package. This time, that's going to be open telemetry again. I'm going to look for instrumentation ASP.NET Core. This is specific instrumentation that will take normal characteristics of ASP.NET and allow us to monitor those as well. Now that we have that. In the tracing, we're going to configure this just like we did last time. And we're going to say configure add ASP.NET core instrumentation. And let's go ahead and bring that in by telem telemetry trace. And this will automatically set up any instrumentation into each trace that is specific to ASP.NET. So you're going to get whether a post or a put or a get or whatever it was called into our tracing. And in metrics, we're going to do something pretty similar, but instead of bringing in and calling extension methods, we're going to configure and we're going to add meter. And we're going to give it a list of three meters that are known in the ASP.NET instrumentation. So it's going to be Microsoft. They're going to be based on namespaces. ASP.NET Core.hosting, Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Server.Kestrel. That will give you some of the semantics of requests and responses. We're also going to say system.net.http. This will be the actual HTTP 
stack that adds some meters as well. And so we're only adding the ASP.NET Core instrumentation here. If we were using Blazor project, for example, there are other Blazor sort of specific meters and tracings in them. There's also ones for other systems as well. And of course, as you saw in my prior video, or I hope you saw in my prior video, you can make your own meters as well. So if, as you want to track the interesting things that are happening. We're not going to do that in this quick example because I want to keep these short. The last thing we need to do is to figure out how to export them. So we go back to our NuGet package yet again. We're actually just going to look at OpenTelemetry exporter. And what we're looking for is the OpenTelemetry protocol. So OpenTelemetry exporter protocol. And we're using this because we're using Aspire. And this will be able to transmit and the dashboard will end up being a client of that data. So we can actually see it in the dashboard or the host. And here we're just going to configure some things. We're going to configure an open telemetry logger options. This is so that we can specify specific options for it. See a pattern with this already. And I'm just going to say configuration add OTLP exporter. Now the dashboard is going to use this or the host is going to use this to be able to gather information. Though one of the ideas behind this, which again, if you saw my other video, you know this already, is that this is really allowing you to configure any sort of endpoints. Now the ones I'm adding here are specific to Aspire and they really should just be for development and debugging. You really need a real provider out there to gather that information, whether that's something in Azure or some third party logging system, but you're going to want those. But for now, I'm just interested in how this works with Aspire. So I'm going to configure another one. And here we're going to call configure open telemetry and you'll see one for tracer and meter provider. So let's do meter first. And notice these are using extension methods where this configure is just specific options object inside the service collection. And so here we're going to say add OLTP exporter. You might be thinking, well, this sounds really familiar and it is. It's the same thing you're going to do for each of these. And instead of meter, this is going to be tracer provider. If we build it, it should build correctly, but we're not really using it yet because what we need to do then is go to the program of all of our .NET apps, go in here to program, and I can just say builder.configure, and this is that extension method. So again, you might not want to call it configure. You might want to say configure host or configure whatever you want to call it. But for us, this is going to call that extension method. And we're doing it this way so that we could call it in multiple projects as we might need it. This project is actually going to have a couple of worker projects that do things like processing shipping and processing orders. And so this will be useful for us to do more than once. So let's go ahead and run it. And if you remember from the last video, it's going to pop open our dashboard as well as running the different pieces of our project. So we've got an active project here. Let's go ahead and see our project and, and I can look at add our stuff. Again, this is all hard coded for now, but we should get interesting information because we now look at metrics. We can see that the API has all of these metrics that we're getting from the open telemetry. So we can really see what's happening. Not all of them have great data yet, but as this runs longer, you'll just see those metrics. In the same way, you should be able to see these traces as well. So if I view this trace, this one took a third of a second, I can really see that what is happening here is this call to get products. This is all the information about that call. We go back, we can see that post that happened, I view it as well. And if this called other systems, we'd actually be able to see the trace detail as it called different parts of our operation. And remember, because this is open telemetry, if you're using third party pieces like RabbitMQ or Redis, those are going to also be able to spit out that information into the metrics and the tracing. So you can see how the whole system is working together. So this just isn't about how you're defining your applications, your microservices as complex deployments, but also for being able to see how those deployments are actually working together. Make sense? Again, I'll put in the show notes a link over to this example where we're at at this point. And so you can see what the code is actually doing. So I'm hoping this very short series about Aspire will encourage you that if you're using something like microservices or even just a complex deployment, that using Aspire can be really helpful. But it's not a magic bullet. It's not going to solve everything, but he's calling. I saw a recent talk by Steve Smith. I think he's calling them microlinths or maybe it's mono services. 
I don't remember <laughs> the phrase suddenly. He talked about using some of the tiered system of creating microservices, but in silos that talk to each other so that even though it might all be in process, it doesn't mean that later you can't start to pull pieces out. Take some of those benefits of a microservice approach of having only connect points at very public places. I think those will be published soon from Stir Trek. That's where I saw it. I definitely encourage you to go look at Steve's stuff about that because you can see his version of in-process is sort of what Aspire is allowing us to do out of process. Well, so another really quick plug for my course, as well as all my Pluralsight courses, all of that, I'm going to put a link down here at the bottom of the video over to my website. Now, I have a blog, but this will be a, the website that shows where all the different trainings I do, my entire catalog of Pluralsight videos, as well as upcoming courses that I'm going to be doing in person and remote. So thanks for coming. Like and subscribe as always, and I will see you next time on Coding Shorts.